Total Land Space Tracy and then we naturally will
welcome to the commencement ceremony for General Social Sciences 2018. I'm Dr. Ruben Zoller, a professor in the History Department and Director of General Social Sciences. We have invited you all here today for a single purpose. It has come to our attention that many of you have been cold and have not gotten enough sun. And we are here to help you boost your vitamin D. Students, you've made it here to a very momentous occasion. It takes a lot of work to get here. We have tested you in math, science, literature, art, accounting, statistics. We've pushed you through an enormous amount of reading, writing, various projects. We've pushed you to think in new ways. We've pushed you to conceive new thoughts, to see the world in new ways. And you have passed the test. Now for our guests here today, who may be wondering what in the world is General Social Sciences, it is a, a program that uh, pulls together where students can uh, make a major that comes from various different disciplines and departments from around campus. So it is interdisciplinary. Each student can choose from one of four different tracks or concentrations. So one of our concentrations is called Applied Economics, Business, and Society. I hadn't thought of that as an applause moment, but all right. Um, and this is, a, this is a, cor a, a track where students will be taking courses in business and economics, and, but also various other um, disciplines, studying the geography of globalization, the business of tourism, women in the workforce, etc. Another concentration is crime, law, and society, which is much like criminal justice. Um, and students will take courses in sociology, political science, ethnic studies, etc., etc. Third track is globalization, environment, and policy. Students take courses in geography, international studies, political science. They'll study issues such as environmental justice, migration, human trafficking, climatology. And our fourth concentration is social studies teaching, which prepares students to enter a graduate program to get their license to teach middle school or high school history, social study, history or social studies. And students in this track will be taking numerous courses in history, economics, political science, anthropology, the list goes on and on. So general social sciences enable students to pursue an intellectual path that they can't quite find in other departments. And for other students, it allows them to pursue a professional path that they can't quite fulfill in other departments. The program is fairly young. Uh, this is our seventh year. Um, we are already one of the very largest programs on campus. Um, we currently have over 1,000 majors, and we have graduated, previous to now, over 1,600 students. Which brings us to the point of the people who actually get some of this work done. Um, I'd like to uh, give some applause to Gretchen Hill. Please stand. Gretchen is, is the program's advisor and program coordinator. She's got a master's in geography. I'd also like to introduce um, our academic advisor, Ryan Smith. Yeah. Ryan has a master's in environmental education. The two of, these two have spent absolutely enormous amount of time handling the hundreds, thousands, millions of problems that you all have created. Parents and guests, if during when we're handing out the diplomas, if you think it's taking a long time to get through the line, it's their fault. Thank you. I would also like to thank, we have many volunteers out here today who are helping to pull off this rather complicated uh, event, so thank you to the many folks handling all of the different arrangements you're seeing. I 
I want to take a moment to recognize um, a select group of our students. Um, I'll be recognizing those students who have won departmental honors. And before I do, I need to tell you actually about another program uh, with which GSS is now partnering. Uh, there's a program on U of O campus called Inside Out. And Inside Out is a, is a program that brings together classrooms that actually occur inside state and federal prisons. And so the courses, you get a professor and half of the students will come from the University of Oregon and half the students will be students who are convicts in the prison. And together, the inside students and the outside students make a very unique learning environment. It's turned out to be very successful at the U of O. We've, I, well, I myself have never taught a class in this, but I've had numerous students who have set, taken inside out courses who routinely t let me know that it was the best course of their entire college career. The reason I mention all of this is that inside out has, be has been long standing enough and so successful that this year we actually have two students from the inside who have gotten enough credits to graduate from the University of Oregon with a major in GSS. So this year, for the first time, um, among our names at commencement are two inside students, um, including the honors students. Both of these students who have graduated uh, have GPAs over 4.0. Uh, which, given the challenges they've had to overcome just to get books and classes, is pretty impressive. Okay, to departmental, so departmental honors is awarded to students who have earned um, at the UO, their overall GPA at the, U, at the U of O is 3.2 or above, and within GSS, their GPA is 3.6 or above. All students who have won departmental honors, I'd like you now please to, to stand. You should know who you are. Please stand. I'll now, and remain please remain standing as I call out names. Raleigh Adet, Ricardo Carizales, Caitlin Cruz Crucial, Tom Devensky, Sarah Donnelly, Nicole Ferrer, Corey Green Larrett, Francisco Hernandez, Caleb Hunter, Francisco Mendoza, Michael Eric Nietzsche, Jessica S Sabadin, Scott Seymour, Noah Stewart, Sarah Woolney. Now, to continue, we also have had some of these students who have received not only departmental honors, but have also been inducted into Phi Beta Kappa, which is a very prestigious national organization recognizing students who have truly excelled academically. Those names are Jack Axelrood, Alexa Bailey, Malcolm McWilliamson, Paula Medina, Alana Mori, Kaylee Niklos. Congratulations. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker for this year's commencement. Althea, Althea Seluver graduated from uh, the U of O in 2015 as a GSS major. Her concentration was in crime law and society. She was a very impressive student and she's gone on to do even more impressive things since she graduated. So we're very pleased that she was willing to come and share with us some of her adventures since graduation and some of her wisdom. Althea. Hello, everyone. Three years ago today, I sat in my green regalia like you do now. I sat here after a weekend of volunteering in prison, a trip to the coast, and several hours updating my resume to communicate, I'm young, but I'm capable of whatever you need me to do. My plan on this day three years ago was to continue my passion work on the weekends, but otherwise work for a year or two, perhaps in an administrative support position for a worthy organization and take a breather. Something practical, stable, with good benefits that would allow me to pay off my student loans, read books for pleasure in the evenings, and go on the occasional vacation. My low-key plan didn't quite work out. Shortly after graduation, a friend of mine, who was a paralegal, decided to start a business. He would do the paralegal work, and I would run the administrative side. And by August, 
two months later, I was working alongside my partner as a paralegal on a capital defense team, representing a man facing the death penalty. I was working almost nonstop on more than one occasion, clocking more than 20 hours in a 24-hour period. My first task was to map more than 10,000 pages of records detailing our client's life history. When an attorney said, get this done, I got it done. I managed expert psychological witnesses, I navigated complex professional tensions, and my caseload increased. On the weekends, I continued volunteering my time. During the year, I had facilitated a grief recovery group made up of incarcerated men who were serving life sentences. In the course of that group, I became aware that people in Oregon's prisons have little to no assistance preparing for parole hearings. And that's the process that governs release. Even if you've done well, you're prepared for release. If you're not prepared for the hearing, you likely won't get out. So I shifted the focus of my weekend work. I began volunteering my time as a parole preparation advocate, working with a man who had spent more than 20 years in prison for a murder he committed as a juvenile. Within eight months of graduation, I was a licensed private investigator. In addition to my paralegal work, I took on a caseload involving criminal um, investigation. I skipped a family Grand Canyon trip to sit through my first murder trial. My first parole client was released from prison and I took on new parole cases. Meeting with my parole clients in the visiting room during general visiting hours meant I was directly exposed to the family members and loved ones of my clients' incarcerated peers. I witnessed family uh, celebrations of birthdays, quite modest. I witnessed the heartbreak of a sibling breaking the news of their mother's death to her incarcerated brother. I witnessed life's mundane moments, simple laughter over a card game, quiet arguments between spouses, the careful selection of snacks from the vending machines. Over time, family members began approaching me and I became aware of their expansive needs. I helped problem solve institutional issues and often lent an ear on the walk from the visiting room to the parking lot at the end of a visit. I became the prison PI. After a year, our business expanded. We took on employees. We helped more clients navigate release. My favorite part, offering my services as a fashion consultant to men who had worn nothing but blue prison clothes for decades. I spoke in classes at universities, meetings and prisons. I saw my first accused client declared innocent of his charged crimes. This year, we began developing a nonprofit advocating for youth convicted in the adult system. Standing here today, I am but a three, three short years ahead of all of you still a youngster in the eyes of so many of your loved ones. And as a young professional, at the start of my career, I've learned two big lessons. Number one, pay attention to the needs around you. Keep watching until you can articulate a solution. As young adults, early in our careers, we face several frustrating realities. One is that while we feel deeply, while we are connected to the things we've learned, and we're not afraid to lock sight on our passions, it's not always easy to translate that into a plan. If you have not already, you will have an adult older than you ask you a question about yourself or your plans that you have no idea how to answer. It may come after a lengthy explanation of the passion you discovered for women's prison reform. The questions come, so what are you gonna do about that? What does that job look like? How are you gonna get there? I recall feeling self-conscious and frustrated by those questions. The intense feeling of urgency for a solution out of sync with my ability to explain how to get there. In answering those questions, or failing to do so, remember your knowledge is not limited by what you can articulate. It is what you can speak, but also what you can feel, what you can sense in your gut, the magnetic pull to something you haven't yet seen in full color, as you enter your professional world, don't diminish the value of the nonverbal. In all of my moments of having no space, or excuse me, having no words, it was the space that existed that allowed me to observe the needs around me and feel my way towards solutions. 
it's in that space of not having words and being able to feel that one sense gets more powerful in, in the diminishment of the others and you're able to figure out how to articulate those solutions. Remember that this degree has taught you to think like a historian, a sociologist, a political scientist, a philosopher, an anthropologist, a psychologist, and more. Use your interdisciplinary skills of observation. View the issue through all the lenses in your possession. Don't shy away when you can't speak. Have at the ready, I'm not sure, I'm gonna figure it out. Number two, trust yourself. I assure you, you are everything that you need to be successful right now. Practice going with your gut, taking risks, being a little bit wild. Practice pushing the boundaries. Work up to the last moment. Work hard. When somebody questions your value because you're the newbie or because you're young or you're the only person at a work outing who had their ID checked, don't undervalue yourself. Trust yourself. Also trust when you need to ask for help. Practice consulting with your advisors and loved ones. Practice adjusting, reevaluating, and changing your mind. And trust your talents and strengths. Demonstrate what you're capable of. Let your strengths guide you into the professional world, and you will be overwhelmed with opportunity. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you very much. We're now going to have two of our uh, current, now graduating students uh, speak. Uh, the first, please come to the podium, Nan Dung. Thank you. Professors, staff, honored guests, families, and fellow graduates, on behalf of the graduating class of 2018, welcome, and thank you for being here to celebrate this milestone with us. I am honored to be given the opportunity today to talk about how the GSS program has assisted me during my academic career and prepared me to reach my professional career goals. Freshman year, I entered the University of Oregon as a pre-business student. I plan to graduate in three years with a degree in business administration, but I bombed. I kept failing courses and I couldn't figure out why. After two terms of being here on academic probation, I was one term away from being disqualified. I decided to take a break and returned home. And it looked as if my career goals and my parents' dream for me to be the first in our family to graduate from a four-year university would all collapse. I took a term off, I attended a community college, I stayed away from letting anyone know that I was back in town as I was trying to figure myself out. When I returned to the University of Oregon, I made two important discoveries. First, I realized that my previous coursework didn't interest me. I always thought I wanted to study business, but the previous courses were training me in finance and accounting, and they just didn't inspire me. I have a lot of ideas for businesses, and among those ideas, turns out that I'm not a numbers guy. I knew now that my passion was in entrepreneurship and management, in coming up with new ideas, seeing an opportunity that others didn't, and helping the, the human side of business meet new potential. The second discovery that GSS, the second discovery that I made was that GSS was my new academic home, the place where I could find the courses that really inspired me. My concentration was in applied economics, business, and society, because I, I wanted to focus on how to start a business how to manage a business and understand how to work with people. The concentration allowed me to craft my own <laughs> curriculum, to take courses in business, journalism, and sociology, to build the skills that would help me achieve my career goals. For example, I enrolled in an introduction to entrepreneurship course that challenged me to think of a business idea and identify the steps on how to properly execute that plan. In, a no in another course, Negotiation Strategies, I practice how to speak with confidence and persuasiveness. And my favorite course, Work in Occupations, show me how to identify and analyze the social relations that shape the experience of work. These were the courses that enabled me to study the parts of business that most mattered to me. The common practices of crunching numbers and analyzing charts did not interest me. What interests me is learning how to operate the business, understanding how a business is ran, and understanding how to maintain 
good relationship with both the employees and the customers. I struggled my freshman year, not because I was unable to perform at a college level, but because I was taking courses that I didn't enjoy. I performed better in this major because I found a purpose in what I was doing. Everything began to be more relevant to what I wanted to do in the future, and it motivated me to become a better student. Without this program being offered, I can honestly say that I didn't belong here as a duck. This major gave me a second chance here at the University of Oregon towards achieving my goals and pursuing my dreams. This is where I needed to be to become the person I wanted to be. The program gave me the flexibility to also be involved on campus. I was the co-director of the Vietnamese Student Association. I initiated into the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity. I even got to an opportunity to intern with Target Corporation as an executive team lead overseeing all oper operations of the store. And with the experience, knowledge, and skills that I have obtained through this program, I entered the working world after today as a client advisor for Louis Vuitton, and additionally will launch my e own e-commerce business in my hometown, Portland. I would like to once again thank our GSF advisors, our honored guests, our families, the staff, and our friends for being here today. I would like to thank my parents for supporting me on my lowest points and believing me that I can make it. Graduating is just one step closer to the dream that one day I can support them the way they have supported me all these years. So that one day, my mom can put down her clippers and my dad can put down his tools. To my little sister, on track to being valedictorian, you're lucky I set the bar low for you. <laughs> and to all you graduates, congratulations. We finally made it. And before we move on from this day and pursue the journey set ahead for us, I'd like to end this speech with a quote from Steve Jobs. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. Thank you guys, and go Ducks. Our next speaker is Annika Scarpino, who graduates from the Concentration of Social Studies Teaching. What is the purpose of life? This was the topic of my final paper for my AP English class my senior year of high school. My teacher, Mr. Lucas, had decided to give each student an individualized subject to write an essay on, and this was mine. I was screwed. I mean, how does a 17-year-old know that question? What I wrote, I don't remember. But what I never forgot was the question or the teacher who assigned it. I don't think Mr. Lucas knows what he sparked in a young woman that day with that question. Over the next decade, the desire to be that teacher, taking the time to personally challenge that student to critically think, would grow stronger and stronger. In 2016, at the age of 30, with a full-time career, a mortgage, and one-year-old twins, I was notified of my acceptance into the University of Oregon on a full-ride scholarship from the Ford Family Foundation. That fall, armed with the support of a strong husband, the fight inherited from a strong-willed mother, a work ethic modeled by a determined father, and motivation derived from my two sons, I entered the GSS program for social studies teaching to finally achieve my dream. The next two years would consist of long days at work and class, followed by too brief a night's sleep. It would be full of sacrifices, like not being there for my children's first steps, or the birth of a nephew, and much of a social life. However, it would also be full of indescribable successes and would teach me some of my most valuable lessons. Like you, in order to get here today, I had to become, become proficient 
in a variety of subjects. It was that variety of courses, combined with the opportunities to apply them in my personal and professional life, that gave me the greatest gifts and shaped so much of who I am today. At the beginning of my second year at University of Oregon, while working as the store manager for a local Harley-Davidson dealership, I attended my first financial review meeting. I remember that day like it was yesterday. I walked into a conference room filled with 10 other people to discover that I was the least experienced person in that room, the youngest person in that room, and the only woman in that room. My first thought was that I didn't deserve my seat at the table. As the others spoke, I took notes, which I was a pro at by now. When it came my turn to present, I was nervous and intimidated. But I opened my mouth and all that coursework kicked in. What it produced was a confidently articulated breakdown of a multi-million dollar income statement, pointing out the company's competitive advantage and closing with a short SWOT analysis and a detailed plan of improvement. I can tell you now, I have never been more grateful for those Economics 380 and Business 215 classes in my life. I could tell by the looks on their faces, the others in the room were just as surprised as me. And in that moment, I knew that all those late nights up studying, early mornings in 8 a.m. classes before work, and lunch breaks spent typing papers were worth it. Because in that moment, I succeeded because I was prepared. And in that moment, I knew that I deserved a seat at the table. This year, I attended my last financial review meeting for that company, surrounded by those same men sitting at the table that I once questioned whether I deserved a place. I realized I had not only earned my seat, but had now outgrown it. Since then, I have taken a new job as a project engineer for a local construction company where on a daily basis, I tap into all that, when will we ever use this again math? <laughs> the knowledge we have gained in the courses required for a degree in general social science do not apply to our future endeavors only. I have tapped into that variety of knowledge several, several times over the course of the last few years. For example, when I'm at home, with, what, with my two boys, and one asks me, Mama, why can't I live on the town, their state, their country, the world, etc.? And because you're a, a citizen in a democracy, part of what that also means is that you're obliged to participate, to actually be a part of politics, and to help keep the republic free and prosperous. And I was thinking about this issue because right now we're living in a particularly fr uh, a time of tremendous political fragmentation. Uh, in my lifetime, at least, older folks here may know differently than I, but in my, in my lifetime, I have not previously seen the level of partisanship and uh, fragmentation and um, squabbling, the ferocity of the squabbling in our political landscape. There are a lot of causes of this. But one of the things that particularly concerns me and that I want to talk about is the, the proliferation of different versions of truth that are now becoming sort of a, a cottage industry of folks who are creating alternative facts or calling things fake news or what they don't, if they don't like something, they call it fake news. <laughs> and then we also have gotten to the point now where when we don't like something, if we don't like an institution, we simply call it inept or inappropriate or illegitimate. You don't like the courts, you call them inappropriate or illegitimate. You don't like Congress, etc., you call them illegitimate. And what's happening, what's particularly worrisome, is a trend where facts become politicized, where institutions become politicized. And as that trend goes, you wind up not knowing what to believe or wondering whether you can believe anything. Now, understand, disagreement's good, disagreement's important, debate is good, but what isn't good 
is if as a society we lose the ability to agree on very basic facts and if we lose the ability to have fruitful, meaningful discussion. If we cannot collectively recognize and identify our problems, it is impossible for us to collectively find solutions. So part of why this is so important to me, I want to describe kind of briefly a, a, a possible nightmarish end game or scenario to all of this, which comes to me very personally. As a part of my research, I've been tr for the past 20 years, I traveled to the country of Venezuela. Venezuela has been, um, and it was exciting. Opposition grew, and the movement that backed one side called the other illegitimate and and said and claimed what they what they claimed, what they said to be fake news. The opposition did the same, and the two sides soon were completely unable to talk to each other. One particular moment for me in all of this that was very pointed. I was living in Caracas, Venezuela. This is the year 2002. And one day the police entered a poor neighborhood to do, you know, on some order of business. And uh, locals in that neighborhood opened fire on the police with automatic weapons, uh, M16s and hand grenades. And there were even some people that had acquired rocket repelled grenades. And the police were completely outgunned and pinned down. And they couldn't get out. And then eventually the National Guard, which had political alliances with this neighborhood, moved in and was able to extricate the police. Okay, so it was a pretty scary day. When we come to the end of it, and of course all of us were wondering, what the heck happened? Like, why is there, why are our police getting fired on in this way? And the next day there was a news conference. And these guys, the guys who claimed to be responsible for the attack on the police were there, in ski masks, holding M16s and AK-47s. And they claimed that they were members of a group called the Catapaica. We'd never heard of this group, so we were all interested. And they said, we were members of the Catapaica. We are allied with the president. He doesn't give us orders. We're independent. But we, uh, uh, but we work with him, and we will support the president. As soon as the news conference was done, the government prompt, uh, of the president promptly said, Catapaica doesn't exist. These guys are fake. They've obviously been put, to it, put, put up to it by the opposition in order to discredit the government. The opposition then came forward and said, no, 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 the Karapaika are real, and obviously they demonstrate that the president has been arming uh, criminal gangs, and the president should be removed. So within 24 hours, we had completely contradictory versions of what was going on, and amusingly, we never actually found out what the truth was. To this day, I can't tell you who the Karapaika were or what they were doing. I just don't know. What I can tell you is that the experience of having that level of violence or that level of disruption and you can't tell what's going on, that's very scary. When all facts have been politicized, when all institutions have been politicized, and things that feel like life and death are impenetrable, that is very, a very lonely and scary place to be. Now, I'm not suggesting that we're at that point now. The United States is not, at that pres not even near that precipice. But I will say that Americans are no smarter than Venezuelans, we're not more moral than Venezuelans, we're not more ethical than Venezuelans. And so this dark reality, I want us to think of it as a warning, a possibility that we need to avoid. Something we should look at and make sure we don't get there. So how do we do that? How do we avoid that? Well, what I want to say to you graduates today is that you are the cure. Your education is the cure. Your education is the solution. You have learned how to hear different perspectives and weigh their bias, consider their evidence, consider the value of their position. You have learned how to take numerous different perspectives, whether it comes from sociology or political science or economics or English or philosophy or religious studies, and to recognize the, the possibility of looking at any problem from numerous solutions. You've learned that the problems that face our world are not simple nor simplistic that they're complicated and that they take complex solutions. You have learned to listen to each other. You have learned to embrace realities that you find uncomfortable or that contradict your assumptions and to work with. Your education is the solution. You are the solution. Embrace your citizenship. Your country depends on you for this. Very briefly, 
let me mention, in case you don't already know it, A little hot out there, isn't it? Okay. Two things then. Let me let me skip that last part. Let me just tell you this. Do this when you go forward. Find a problem that matters to you. Figure out how to solve it. Embrace things that are make that make you passionate and make you excited. Don't take work that bores you. If you take work that bores you, it's probably you're gonna probably gonna wind up disappointed with yourself. Find a cause that really inspires you and go. Make friends with people who are diverse. Racially diverse, religiously diverse, all of that diverse, but also politically different from you. Learn how to talk to people you don't agree with. And learn how to listen to each other. You don't necessarily need to change each other's minds, but you do need to be able to be with each other and be respectful. Cultivate a lot of skills. You're going to have to be adept. You're going to have to adopt. And lastly, let me say, you have earned this day. You got here on your own. We didn't give it to you. You've earned it. Have courage, have adaptability, have perseverance. 2018, congratulations. <laughs> Diplomas, let's go. Okay. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. We're going to have you graduates are going to come up here to receive your diplomas. As you cross the stage, each one of you will individually say your name and say the, um, the concentration you're a part of. And then you're going to step across and find me for a little photo. Okay. Terrence Mitchell, Crime Law and Society. My name's Bennett Chongbian, Environment Globalization Policy, but if any parents are hiring, I got my uh, resume. Yeah. Alexander Wachtowski, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Social Studies teaching. <laughs> Devesh Shanoi Nathan, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Individual Economic and Business. Woo! 
Boldly uh, economic and business. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Morris, uh, business and econ, I think. Sierra Jameson, Crime Law and Society. Macy Chow, Crime Law and Society. Zion Lee, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Quinn Nguyen, Applied Economics and Business and Society. Kevin Rogers, Social Studies Teaching. Thomas Penfold, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Yes, Thomas! <laughs> Justice Newton, Applied Business, and Economics, and Society. Claire Rank, Crime, Law, and Society. <laughs> Megan Hork, Business, Econ, and Society. Woo! Natasha Cheetos Gabayan, Crime Law and Society. Woo! Joseph Kays, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Woo! Ben Monnier, Economics, Business and Society. Jason Piotto, Globalization, Environment, Policy. Yeah! Patrick Oder, Applied Business and Econ. Jacqueline Brooks Seaborn, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Yeah! Yusuf Thomas Smith II, Crime Law and Society. Tristan Green, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Alexander Wilson, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Tristan Moore, Social Studies Teaching. So I'm going to interrupt here. We need this aisle to be clear so that way the students can file back to their seats. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That whole aisle there, right near the ramp, needs to be clear so the students can come back. Thanks. You know, they need to just come off there and then come back there. What's that? The photographer is right there. She, she's good. There. Joseph McHugh, Business and Economics. Um, Lizzie Kinsman, Globalization, Environment and Policy. Lyndon Brentano, Crime Law and Society. Theodore Robert Godfrey Jr., Applied Business, Economics, and Society. Shout out, Mom and Dad. Let's go, Doc! Brian Wilson, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Jack Axelrude, Crime Law and Society. Sydney Arnone, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Madeline 
Franklin Street, Applied Business and Economics. Douglas Hagashi, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Jonathan Chen, Applied Econ, Business and Society. Matthew Yates, Applied Economics and Business. Madison Waters, Crime Law and Society. Kelsey Gilseth, Applied Business, Economics and Society. Tang Chen Lu, Econ and Business. Uh, Su Feng Shang, Applied Economics, Business and Society. <laughs> Bailey Murahashi, Globalization and Policy and Environment. <laughs> Jenna Tobin, Crime Law and Society. Daniel Fiacco, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. <laughs> Lindsay Weens, Applied Economics. Christian Vitale, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Brian Olson, Crime Law and Society. Shaylin Hockett, Globalization and Environment and Policy with a minor in CIT. Christopher Michael Gasparo, Applied Economics and Business. Angie Lackman, Crime Law and Society. Tracy Kane, Crime Law and Society. Um, do you type anyone apply economic business and society? Eduardo Barria Rincón, Law, Crime and Society. <laughs> Sam Johnson, Applied Economics, Business and Society. <laughs> Joshua Kaplan, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Kayla Marie Gonzalez, Crime Law and Society. <laughs> Brittany Stevens, Applied Business and Economics. Jade Casey, Crime Law and Society. Tyler Rickard, War Reason 4, also Skoducks, Business and Economics. James Brown, Applied Business, Economics, and Society. I love you, family! Jack Bloom, Applied Business and Economics. Sam German Miller, Applied Business, Economics, and Society. Uh, Ryan Bowers, Applied Business and Economics. <laughs> Hayden Coppage, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Yeah. Nails Green, Globalization, Environment and Policy. Yeah. Woo. Slater Oss, Applied Economics, Business and Society. 
Madison McKay, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Go Ducks! Harley Lynn Davidson, Applied Economics, Business Society. Go Ducks forever! Austin Mitchell, Applied Economics and Business, and I love my mom. Corinne Moffitt, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Uh, Kay Benton, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Shout out to the Caddy and the Vatican Boys. Kenny Oyama, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Happy birthday, Michael. Love you. Edward Healy, Applied Business, Economics and Society. Go Ducks! Dylan Wright, Applied Economics and Business. Caddy Boys, baby. Brody Quickwarner, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Levi Yarbrough, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Cody King, Applied Business and Economics. Corey Thompson. Thank you. Crime Law Society. Shout out to mom yelling over there. I love it. Thank you. Teddy Flume. Applied Economics and Business. Abakar Abdul, Crime and Law. Harrison Carr, Applied Economics. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my family and the Narancic family. I love you guys. Abby Dooley, Crime Law and Society. Sarah Sellen, Globalization, Environment and Policy. <laughs> Michaela Vinson, Applied Economics, Business and Society. <laughs> Ismael Magana, uh, Crime Law and Society. Freeman, Globalization, Environment, and Policy. <laughs> Courtney Fisher, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. <laughs> Christina Jenkins, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Yeah. Veronica E. Blindquist, Crime Law and Society. <laughs> Sawyer Kilgore, Applied Economics and Business. <laughs> Elliot Rask, Applied Economics, Business and Society. Marcus Kozlov, Applied Business and Economics. <laughs> Christian Medina, Applied Business, Economics, and Society. Mary Ellum, Applied Business and Economics. Shanice Robertson, Crime Law and Society. Matthew David Theodosopoulos, Applied Business, Economics, and Society. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Remington Weiss, Applied Business, Economics, and Society. Teddy Watson, Crime Law and Society.
Josh Fortner, Economics and Business. Francisco Hernandez, Crime Law and Society. Thank you. Mackenzie Frank, Crime Law and Society. Tyler Stewart, Crime Law and Society. Alan Z, Econ the Business. Wu Chuan Chiu, Applied Economics, Business and Society. I love you, my family. Let's go, Ducks! Robert Santich, Crime Law and Society. Kenichi Hackman, Business, Econ, and Society. Shout out all the fifth years. It may not have been pretty, but we got here. Alyssa Locke, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Brent Haxby, Applied Economics, Business, and Society. Shout out to my wife for dealing with me all this time. Casino Los Buenos! Jennifer Kim, Business and Economics. 